Um, I am Kevin Roos. Uh, thank you guys all for coming. And uh, this is my, my new book. Uh, it's called uh, The Unlikely Disciple, A Sinner's Semester at America's Holiest University. And just to make clear, this is not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner in that we're all sinners. I'm, you know, it's not that I'm in a chain gang or anything. I'm just, <laughs> I, was a, uh, I was a pretty normal uh, Brown student, all told. So that's where I'll, I'll begin my spiel tonight is by telling you that before I went to Liberty, um, before I, I studied uh, at, at the Reverend Jerry Falwell's Bible Boot Camp, which is also pro and properly known as Liberty University, I was a pretty typical Brown student. I had a pretty typical social life here. That's me in front of the Van Winkle Gates. Uh, I sang in an a cappella group, which uh, confirms my dork status. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, in the middle of my freshman year uh, at Brown, I, I met a group of students from Liberty University. Uh, I was on, on assignment with my boss, who's a journalist named A.J. Jacobs. He wrote this book, Year of Living Biblically. And uh, so we were down at, at Reverend Falwell's megachurch uh, to, to help him with his book. And I, I stumbled into a group of, of Liberty students. And I, it, it, it occurred to me very quickly that I had almost nothing to talk about with these people. I mean, here were students that were my own age, um, right in my, in, in my country, in my time zone. We were all in college. They sort of looked like me. And yet, when I tried actually sort of opening my mouth and, and making a connection there, it, it was very hard. There was, there was a huge and immense culture gap that separated me from them. Um, but just to tell you a little bit about Liberty, Liberty is the world's largest evangelical Christian university. It has uh, over 12,000 students on campus, and when you count the students who are part-time or taking classes over the internet, it has about 45,000 students. So this is a huge university. It's in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, and uh, it was founded in 1971 by the Reverend Jerry Falwell, who some of you may know. Uh, Reverend Falwell has made himself sort of infamous among American evangelicals for uh, saying things like this. Fact number one, global warming as we think we know it does not exist. So that's Jerry Falwell. Uh, just a little introduction. You might also know that he was, the, uh, he was charged, although it's not completely accurate, with outing the purple Teletubby as a homosexual. <laughs> Um, so that's, I think, will forever be his legacy, even though it's a little bit uh, errant in, uh, in fact. So, um, uh, and then Liberty also has a 46-page code of conduct, which is called the Liberty Way. Um, and the Liberty Way outlaws drinking, smoking, cursing, dancing, R-rated movies, uh, and hugs that last for longer than three seconds. Uh, and, and when you add all that up, it's like 95% of the typical Brown student's day, right? This is like <laughs> what we do. Uh, and it doesn't actually come in, in tablet form, but uh, it comes in on paper. But it's, uh, I thought we could, we could snazz it up for the biblical theme. Um, so, <laughs> so Liberty is this, is this admittedly pretty extreme place. Um, but I decided after I had met these Liberty students and heard more about their school, um, that, it was some, that, that knowing more about them and their culture was something that I not only wanted to do, um, but I sort of needed to do as an educated citizen, um, as someone who, who makes it his goal to learn about as many groups of people as possible. Um, religion is our sort of driving cultural force. I really believe it's, it's the single uh, largest challenge and the single um, largest issue facing America is, is our religious divide, what they call the God divide. Um, and I, I read statistics that said that something like 51% of non-evangelicals don't know any evangelicals at all. Um, and this was me. I mean, when I was at Brown, I, you know, I had Catholic friends and Buddhist friends and, and, and Jewish friends and atheist friends, but really couldn't count uh, among my inner circle sort of any conservative especially, but, but just at all evangelical Christians. So this was something um, that was the first motivation was sort of curiosity and journalistic curiosity. I thought it might make uh, for a good story. But I also had a, a personal quest, um, which is that I wanted to explore uh, my own faith and my own conceptions about, about God and, uh, and Christian education and what I thought about them. Because I was raised in sort of the ultimate secular liberal home. Uh, my parents uh, are secular Quakers. We, we sort of uh, observed very loosely. We never said grace. We never uh, read the Bible. So I had basically a secular childhood. My parents are also very liberal. They worked for Ralph Nader in the 1970s. So this is like, you know, sort of the, I've got the, uh, the, the pedigree here of, of a very uh, typical Brown student. Um, but I wanted to find out, you know, because Qu Quakers are Christians. I mean, uh, they're a sect of Christianity, and so I was technically a Christian. Um, but I had never really explored what that meant or what it meant to be a Christian in this society or what, it, you know, what I could learn by being around Christians who are very different 
than me in both political and social and, and actually religious viewpoints. Um, so I wanted to, to go uh, explore. So in the, middle of, in, the, in the middle of my sophomore year then, I, uh, I decided to uh, take time off from Brown and enroll at Liberty as a transfer student. Uh, first, it was a sort of a process. I had to go to the, uh, to the dean and ask, you know, so I, instead of taking a semester abroad, can I go to uh, Jerry Falwell's school? And he sort of looked at me and he goes, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that before. <laughs> But he's, he, uh, and he said, actually, no, I'm sure no one has ever asked me that before. Uh, but he, he let me. And so um, I, I uh, and then the next thing I had to do was to tell my friends, and they were all very amused um, because, you know, the, they pictured me following this 46-page code of conduct. So I got a lot of jokes like, you know, a, a semester with no sex, uh, and this will be different. How? <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> So this was, this was something that I, I had to uh, tell them, and then I had to tell my parents, and they were, of course, very skeptical. Um, but once I reassured them that I was in this for the right reasons, um, that I wanted to go there, um, not, to, not to be you know, converted, not to sort of you know, go native, uh, as, as they say, but actually to just explore with an open mind um, Christian culture and see what I could learn from these people who are my peers, uh, Liberty students, and, and who uh, it's a real shame if we can't communicate because we are going to share we are going to be adults in, in the same country um, if we aren't already. So I, I think, um, and so I made the decision to go down uh, to Liberty. And I had to uh, go undercover um, technically because I, I did want to be as honest with Liberty students as I could. And so I didn't use a fake name. I told them that I'd come from Brown. And actually a lot of them were, were very, um, I, I expected sort of raised eyebrows when I said that I'd come to Liberty from Brown because I don't know how many people in the history of either school have ever done that. But uh, they sort of had, had pity for me. They would like, because they, they assumed that I was fleeing Brown uh, because it was so secular and so left-wing that I just couldn't take it anymore. And so they would say things like, well, I hope uh, Liberty is a breath of fresh air for you. <laughs> so I, I uh, said, you have no idea. Um, so when I got there, I had to immediately begin studying up. Uh, I actually bought the Bible for Dummies um, because I had had no Bible training growing up. This was not something that I was familiar with. I barely knew uh, you know, some of the, some, I'd taken a class with actually with Professor Kramer down here on the New Testament, but as far as the Old Testament went, and as far as sort of the traditional evangelical interpretations of the Bible, I knew basically nothing. So I had to learn about the Bible, and this was sort of like a crash course. I had one Christian friend from high school who, uh, who sort of trained me. She was like my drill instructor for a weekend, so she would say, you know, like, who's the first martyr? And, uh, you know, what did God create on the fourth day? And I'd sort of answer as best I could. Um, and then I had to learn about Christian cultural customs too, like praying um, and, and reading scripture and the sort of various, uh, you know, parts of Christian life that aren't so obvious. Um, and, and so uh, one of these parts was that actually at Liberty, uh, there's no cursing allowed. So I had to buy this book called 30 Days to Taming Your Tongue. It's a Christian self, self-help book and it teaches you to replace all your curse words with sort of, with Christian exclamations. So instead of saying, you know, Whatever you would say, a four-letter word, you're supposed to say, you know, glory or, uh, or uh, mercy me or something. So I, I, I took that to heart. I think it was written like in the 60s or something, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but it, it was pretty outdated. When I got there, I walked around, you know, saying these things sort of felt like, you know, Kenneth the Page from 30 Rock, um, you know. But, but then it turned out that, that actually they speak a lot like Brown students, except, you know, they say like crap and darn uh, instead of their vulgar equivalent. So that was, that was a bit of a snafu on my part. Um, <laughs> and a couple of the first things I noticed about Liberty, um, the first thing actually was that uh, there's an incredible amount of admiration on campus uh, for Jerry Falwell, for the school's founder. So you can see there in the bookstore they actually have t-shirts that you can wear that say Team Jerry. Uh, I picked one of those up if anyone's interested. Uh, I'll, I'll sell it for a fair price. And, uh, and I, I also got a shirt that says Jerry is my homeboy. I actually have those. So if you're at all curious. Um, 